One of our key missions is to figure out what are the temperature limits of life within the deep subsea floor biosphere and how deep microbial life can survive in such a deep and energetically challenging environment. First, we were surprised that microorganisms are there, and now we are surprised and, and can't understand where, where does it stop, where is the bottom of the deep biosphere, and what ultimately limits life there. During this expedition, we want to learn uh, more about the habitability of subsea for our life and uh, how deep uh, microbes can live and uh, what is the temperature limit of the subsea for biosphere and what is the habitable zone on a planet inside of the earth uh, we don't know which is a very principal issue for life science uh, very nice course really good better than expected this will be a week after this but this location is really well suited for this research question because the heat flow is very high and it has been investigated before by several scientific drilling expeditions. So we knew already that cell concentrations are going down with depth and that there is a sharp drop around 80 degrees Celsius. And now we want to come back with technologies that have developed enormously over the last decade. Some techniques have become more than 100,000 times more sensitive. So now we have the chance to find out what's going on here. The seafloor is an extreme environment. It's dark, there is no energy from sunlight, and the pressure can be very high. Temperature is also a very important factor there because, in general, temperature increases by roughly 25 degrees Celsius per kilometer. So with increasing depths, this environment is getting hotter and hotter. This environment is particularly high heat for area. If we start drilling from the sea floor, then the sedimentary sequence of 1.2 km covers the temperature range of life, which is up to roughly 120 degrees C. delivered from the brick floor by the operation geologist. So we get a very first description when the core is in the core cutting area. Then we cut a nine and a half meter long core into sections so that we can handle it inside the laboratory area. And we send the core to the CT scanner first. Based on the images, we distribute core sections for a whole round core sampling plan because geochemists and microbiologists need the sample very fresh and they should not be in contact with oxygen and they need to be processed and stored at the exactly right conditions right away. And a part of the samples is immediately analyzed on board. They also take contamination measurements and make sure that everything is under control. The samples are packed under nitrogen atmosphere in gas-tight bags and either stored at plus 4 degrees or carefully frozen to avoid any change of structures. And then the curator takes care of them and sends them in cool boxes to the helicopter and then to shore.
one of the big problems we have had is that it is very difficult to conduct microbiological study during the expedition at offshore phase since the microbiological study usually requires highly stable environment. Onboard environment is、um, usually not so clean compared with the onshore laboratory or the stability of the ship. The vibration level is very low, but it's still moving. So, we cannot place any of the high technology equipment on board. So, simply saying, without having shore based activity, we cannot reach the goal of this expedition. So, by using helicopter, We can transfer our samples to onshore laboratory. To be fresh is very important stuff for a microbiology study since deterioration of the sample may happen throughout the storage time. So that's why we need to be quick manner for doing our research. That's awesome. So, then so we are now in perfect situation for. Having the drilling field in a helicopter deliverable distance. And for doing that, we need to have the parallel study of the onshore and the offshore phase. Chikyo is paradise for us. It's a very well oiled machinery of High tech science. As scientists, we come here, we don't have to cook our food, we don't need to do our laundry, we can work 12, 14, 16 hours a day without worrying about anything else but science. And then on top of that, we have a really strong team of technicians who are supporting our work. We have all the colleagues we can dream of to discuss our findings with, and we have excellent equipment in the laboratory, so it's really cutting edge technology at our hands. So, our location is almost the edge of high pressure, and there is low pressure south of this area, and that's why、uh, windy and high wave condition around this area. So,、uh, but the weather is fine. For me, the special thing is that you really have scientists from all over the world coming together and just trying to solve one problem. And everyone putting their heads together and bringing in their expertise. And you have scientists with backgrounds in geochemistry, microbiology, geology, and sedimentology. And yeah, every day you learn something new. For me, it is absolutely the expedition's goals of drilling through limits of life and logging where they've occurred. We're looking at the kind of processes that have happened to change sediments into rocks, and we can link that to temperature scale. And particularly in a site such as this, where we have hydrothermal alteration beginning to become evident, we have some small mineral veins, and we also have mineralization occurring within the sediments themselves, which indicate sort of hydrothermal conditions. So that's quite exciting. So if we see some instances where life's fallen off and then risen back up again, that would be a successful expedition. I want to try to make a linkage between the earthquake, seismology, and microbio. That's my challenging research at the moment. So, this is a nice opportunity to collaborate with many geochemists and microbiologists and、uh, to achieve my science goal. I need t h e s e help. So, that's why I joined this cruise. Measuring microbial activity in the deep biosphere is really challenging because, first of all, there are very few microbes down there, and then, secondly, they don't have much food. So, in a traditional way, when you measure microbial activity, you would 
look out for how much of what they produce accumulates in a sample. Um, let's say, for example, uh, methanogenesis, so microbes that produce methane. But um, in the deep biosphere, they produce so little that it would not be possible to measure it with a normal instrument. And so instead what we do is we feed them radioactive food, which they then convert into radioactive methane. And um, the method is very sensitive so that we can track even very little, little activity in the deep biosphere. On this expedition, one of my main scientific roles is to measure the abundances of different carbon and hydrogen isotopes inside these molecules of methane. And if we can measure the temperature at which the carbon and hydrogen were put together to make methane, then we can tell where the methane might have come from deep in the subsurface. And based on measurements that can tell us that information using methane isotopes, we can then infer where the methane might have been formed, how long ago it might have been formed, and whether or not it might have been formed by organisms or by processes that don't relate to organisms in the subsurface. And that's one of our main contributions to understanding the deep biosphere here at Site 23. Any questions? No, no, no. Just, uh, you guys have been working very hard for you know, quite a while now. Right. Now that you're downhill for the end of the expedition. John, this is Fabina again. I can report the scientists are all still in really good shape and I'm impressed with this team. Uh, everyone is friendly and happy and a little bit tired, of course, but uh, we are doing really fine and I think we can manage and we will all be happy and successful in the end. Oh, you're right. I have to start Ready? Ready? <laughs> Often our notion of how science works, what we learn in school, is a little bit oversimplified. You know, we have a hypothesis, but we find something completely different. And uh, that's when good science is found, when actually it challenges your creativity. You know, we don't become limited by the ideas which we came in with. We should try to see where the data leads us. finish making boreholes, uh, we will install the temperature measurement tool and uh, monitor the in-situ temperature for one year. This temperature information is essential for the T-limit project because it provides the ground truth evidence that actually the lives are living in really an extremely high temperature environment. This expedition has been ongoing almost as planned. We took cores from the most part of the hole, and the quality was good, and it's good enough to allow us to challenge the limit of life. No, no, we did it in a while. The expedition is finished, but the scientists bring back their data and samples to their own institutes, so the real research will start after the end of the expedition. So it was a great experience for me. It started to feel, uh, I don't know, a bit sad also to, to leave. Best is uh, probably the feeling of uh, being part of community that so long on a close environment with a specific goal. Yeah, that probably was the best experience. Uh. In the beginning, we didn't even know each other, and right now we are growing together as a really nice team, uh, having one specific goal, finding the temperature limit of life. I think I will leave the ship with a smile on my face, but also with a tear in my eye. Fifteen years ago, we couldn't tackle the issue of limits of life because the previous cell detection or enumeration limit is roughly 10 to the fifth per cubic centimeter. And now uh, the, our technology at KCC uh, can evaluate the cell concentration at roughly uh, one cell per cubic centimeter. 
So now this is a good timing to tackle the very fundamental issue of limits of life and the biosphere.